In this video, we're going to see how we can compute these eigenvalues and eigenvectors. That we have seen that geometrically, an eigenvector is some direction corresponding to a particular linear transformation where the linear transformation just takes that direction and only stretches it by some multiple, the eigenvalue lambda. And that indeed, eigenvector eigenvalue pairs were given according to this particular formula. Now, what we're going to do in this video is figure out how to algebraically compute eigenvalue eigenvector pairs given some particular matrix. Now, before we jump into a specific example, I want to play around with this formula a little bit more. Because at first glance, it seems a little bit odd. On the one hand, we're taking a matrix times a vector. And on the other hand, we're taking a scalar multiplication of a vector. So in some sense, this particular equation is comparing different types of things. But I can fix that in the following way. We know that if I take the identity matrix, which we call capital I, that this particular matrix, when I multiply it to x, is just going to spit out the vector x. So I can just always insert an identity matrix in front of an x, and it's going to work out perfectly fine. You'll remember, by the way, that the identity matrix is this. At least in the 3x3 three three case. All right. Well, now I've got an equation where two things are different sides. Let me put them both on the same side. So I'm then going to manipulate, and I'm going to say that this ax, and I'm going to subtract it off minus lambda i times x. And this is all going to be equal to the zero vector. And then I notice that both of the two terms I'm subtracting have an x in them. So why don't I try factoring that out? So I'm going to come along here and say that this is a minus lambda i, one single matrix, all multiplied by the vector x, and that's going to be equal to zero. And as long as I come along here and add in the condition that this is also imposing that x is not equal to zero, then all of these steps are indeed biconditional. They're if and only if. So what I have left is some equation, and it's a homogeneous system. Notice that a minus lambda i, well, this is a subtraction of two matrices, so that's a matrix. This is one matrix times x is equal to zero. That's a homogeneous system. So what really is my goal here? I am trying to find a non-trivial solution. I'm not interested in the x equal to zero solution. I know that's a solution. That's easy. The question is, are there other solutions? So my goal is a non-zero solution to a homogeneous system. Now, we've seen homogeneous systems many times before, and we know that the idea of how many solutions a homogeneous system has is connected to many different portions of our course. But I'm going to focus particularly on the connection to determinants. And the property is this. If I have a homogeneous system, then it is going to have infinitely many solutions precisely when the determinant of that coefficient matrix is equal to zero. When the determinant is not equal to zero, then we knew that that was going to give us an invertible matrix. An invertible matrix would give us a unique solution, only that zero solution. So that's why I want to consider when the determinant is equal to zero, that's when I get a non-trivial solution. In other words, this whole thing that we have specified is the same thing as demanding some solution to the determinant of this matrix, whatever that matrix is, I want that equal to zero. And this equation that I have come up with is going to be how I'm going to find my lambdas. And indeed, finding a solution to the original ax equal to lambda x, where x is non-zero, is going to be precisely equivalent to figuring out that this determinant is equal to zero. 